Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about making a procedural flag pull with also some simulation on the flag. And there will be two parts of this. So let's jump into Houdini and let's create a geometry network to start with. In here, we will use a tube model. And one of the first things to do is to set this to a polygon and also close the caps with the closed shape. And we're going to further continue with adding then a bevel since I want to bevel some of the edges. So on this bevel node, we can select then a certain primitive or edging. So in this case, we can select the handle and press enter to confirm our selection. So we can set a now a distance for the beveling. And since I choose the primitive, we now have a procedural way of working where it's not bound to certain edges, but to a primitive. What is interesting further here is that we can also control this by a ramp value. So we can have very specific direction. Cool thing here is that we can also use the points from that ramp as geometry or as uh, topology. So it's now optimizing automatically based on the thing where I click. So now we have something like this, and we can also make this a bit more bigger in shape if you want to. Then let's continue with adding some color by using the gradient ramp. This is again a labs tool, so make sure you install SideFX labs. Then also let's add a color here. So let's maybe add some dark uh, greenish color here and then let's go into more gray color since it's a stone border or stone foundation for the coil so now we have that what also can you do is that you can see that the model is quite smooth now we can also add normals to make the, the difference between the smoothing groups so we can as you can see here get some different smoothing control or normal control now let's continue then adding a wooden pole so again, we will set this to a polygon type and we're going to make this a bit smaller and a bit longer. So we can also play around with the sliders, of course, so it's up to you. And we can also play around with the handles here to make it, for example, more an interesting shape. And I'm also going to close the caps, of course. Now I want to procedurally figure out how to sort of like stack them or place them on top of each other. Now there are a couple of ways of doing this and we can, for example, extract a primitive here, the top primitive again, and we are quite lucky since if I enable here the numbers, number zero is the top primitive. So whenever you place a tube, number zero will always be the, the pro top primitive here. So that's very useful in our case. So I can just say to a blast node that I only want to have a primitive zero. So if I type in zero, and if I reverse it, because it's going to delete it by default, we now have only that primitive. So now we're going to match the position. So we're going to use the match size. And we're going to use our first input, our tube, and our second input, the position we want to match. So here we have that. And currently, it's just centering them. So here we are centering them. But we want to, of course, have the Y position to be changed to either a minimum or we can also go to maximum, which is then to the maximum distance. And that's already merged this together. And you can see that this automatically now would stack. So if I would change one of the inputs here, so make this larger, it will automatically stack on each other. So we can again tweak some of the settings. Maybe the pole is a bit too big, so we can make it smaller. And of course, we should probably add a color. So let's again place the gradient color and this is a wooden structure, so let's make it into maybe a brownish color. So, and maybe the dark and the lighter one. So we have some interesting color uh, variation. So that's our basic setup here for that. And now let's create a uh, part where the flag will be hanging on. I'm gonna start out by placing a line, and in the line, I'm gonna say in the x direction. So. I'm going to say 100, zero, zero. so it's in the x direction. We're going to increase the length, and we're also then going to increase the amount of points used. So once I have the line, let's place a sweep node. And on the sweep node, we can then set this to a tube, a round tube. So we have some just around tube geometry. And interesting is we can use the ramps again for controlling some shapes. So here, the reason why I added more topology or more points is that we can control this with a ramp. So I can create a shape like this. So this will be an interesting shape 
where your flag should be hanging on and it can also make it a bit longer if I'm going for a bit more cartoonish style. So these are quite useful and we can also set this to for example a b c or a uh, b spline so it's like more roundish or you can go back to like a, a linear or constant value so as you can see like you can have some quite a lot of control here in how things are looking. You can also add more divisions this is a quite flexible way of working where I can quickly tweak uh, what I'm looking for. Now currently we also have a lot of geometry on topology so a quick way to clean this up is by using the flatten edging. So this will basically delete everything that is in a flat area and out of the box this gives us a really good result uh, so we don't have to worry about manual, manually cleaning this up. The next step is adding color and I can just copy paste it from what I had before. If you want to add some different colors you can but I'm going to stay consistent with some basic colors here. Now we have that setup and let's already think about where my flag should be so I'm going to place a transform node and the transform here will decide how long or the width of my flag should be. So I want to set the pivot first of all in the middle and we're going to use a function or an expression which is called centroid. This will get the center from zero which means itself so look at itself and then we're going to say dx which means for the, the x-axis of course. So now it's in the middle. So now if I change the scale we now can set the width of the flag. So this will be controlling how long the width is. So the next step is also deleting all these points. So I added a lot of points and I want to use the face node here with the remove inline points to delete all the points that are in the same line of that uh, curve. Now next step is then also adding an extrude. So I have the length but now I want to also have the width of the flag. So let's change this here with an extrude. So the default extrude option might not be useful here. So if we scroll down to the front transformer, we can actually enable this and then we have a handle. So often I would like to set this to global and just drag it around. We can also just add a, a rotation or scale. So we can also make this a bit more interesting in shape, which I can recommend it. And you can also scale it a bit. So we have something like this and this is my basic flag shape. Uh, now important here is to add a group node. So this will be later useful. So we're going to call this flag. So every time I type in flag I will be able to call this. Then also adding UVs here will be important. So I'm going to use the UV projector and we can say initialize. So it will automatically clamp to the bounds. And we can also manually fill in some values if we want to. So if for example, for example set 2, it will be 2. If you set this to higher to 4, it will be half this. So here is a basic texture that I load in with the quick sheet node. So you can just draw something quickly in Photoshop and load it in to have some basic uh, view of that. Then let's merge the results together. And I can see that my flag is not in an ideal position. So we might want to go here to the transform and bring this a bit downwards. So it's like a little bit under that uh, model. Now next step I also, also want to have like clamps or certain holders for the flag. So let's place a box here and let's model a clamp or a holder. So I'm just going to squeeze the box with shift. And then I'm also going to place a poly bevel. I'm going to select the edge by the handle and I'm pressing enter when I'm done. Then I'm going to give this a dimension, then I'm going to set the distance here and we're going to do another bevel to get rid of the quite low poly feeling and make this a bit more interesting in geometry so it's not hard etching. So then we have this model, we can also add some normals if we want to. So we can for example set it quite low so we have a result like this. And now we want to then copy this on the points of that line. So we have the points here, so we have two points and I want to copy the clamp on the points. So we're going to use this in the points and then we're going to use our model. So what you see now is that they're not really rotated or oriented in the right direction. Now in Houdini what we often would do is use a poly frame node. So this can be used to control the normal direction of points. So here if I would enable my normal view, you should see these small lines uh, of our points. So a trick that we often do is we disable the normal 
and in the tangent name you fill in or normal which is just called n and now we see these small lines which is then the direction where my models will be copied so i want this to be in the center of the line so they both need to face the center and we're going to use here the primitive centroid option so they are actually facing in the middle here so that you might not be super easy to see so now you can see that they're actually facing in a better direction now the only thing left here is to place a transform node and in the transform you're just going to rotate it uh, 180 degrees like so and now i actually have clamps in a better position. Now when I merge them, I see that they are, could use some tweaks, so let's make them smaller. And let's also change the position a bit, so I can quickly here tweak the position until I'm like happy with where it should be. So maybe make them a bit smaller, some last tweaks here, and I think this is okay to work with. Now also I would like to add some more colors so I'm going to grab the gradient here and maybe place it under my uh, merge node. So we can grab that. But I don't like my flag to be influenced by this. So I'm going to uh, cut the line and then merge that afterwards. So we have the color gradient not interfering with my texture. Then we also want to symmetrize this so we can have this on both sides. So if I would now turn this in the right direction, we now have this result. So we have on both sides the same uh, effect. Now our pivot also important here is perfectly in the middle there of that metal bar, which is good for us to know, because now I want to copy that bar with the flags on top of my model. So if we use the technique that I showed before, this might not be perfectly working. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a single point, which you can do with the add node, so enable point. So we will now have one single point in our world. And this point, I want them to be matched on the position. So we're gonna use the match size again, and we're gonna match or align the point with my uh, construction here. So I'm gonna set the Y axis to minimum, or for example, maximum, I think it is better. And you can see that now the point is at the top of that. So I can now copy my model on that point. And this will automatically give me the good result. So don't have to worry about having specific positions. We can just copy it on that point and that will work fine. Now let's merge that together to see the result. And now I have my result here. So this is already working really well. So I can always go back and for example, change the tube. So again, we have a procedural approach so we can change uh, different values. But now last step here is to adding a small detail on top. So we're gonna add one more detail here and I'm gonna just copy paste what I had here and paste it over here. And what I'm gonna do with that is, is changing the direction. So I want this to be faced upwards. So I'm gonna change this to uh, zero, one in the Y and then zero again. So it's faced up in the up direction. And I'm gonna change the ramp. So maybe let's make it a bit bigger and play around here with the positions of that shape. So we can make it a bit more interesting. So you can make this in whatever you want. You can also do other things with this. But here I'm gonna just keep it simple and quite controllable by just using ramps here again. So we have that shape and let's also grab the colored node. If you want to merge this, we also need to copy this on that point. So we're gonna just grab the copy to points and now we have that result. Now, one more thing we need to do here is maybe change the position a bit better so I can automatically do a match size in the middle of the world. And I can also manually tweak this a bit by holding with the mouse. If it's not really what you're looking for, you can always place a transform node. And in here, we also have more options for scaling as well. So maybe scale it a bit smaller, like so. You can play around. Uh, with these values. So maybe let's, uh, last thing here, let's add a bolt in the middle. So before this setup here, let's do a merge node and let's merge a tube model. So let's use a tube. And in the tube here, I'm gonna just grab the rotation and then rotate that 90 degrees. 
and maybe also you can set it to polygons, closed caps, and change some of that scale. So it's probably a bit too large here. So we might want to like make this a bit smaller again. And let's merge that in the input. And let's see how that looks in my scene here. So it's maybe big, too big. So let's maybe make it smaller. So this is probably better. So we have like sort of like a bolt. You can add some more details to that geometry if you want to to make it more interesting. So this is quite basic uh, setup here. And that's basically it for this part. So this is part one where I created the basic uh, flagpole. So now I want to show you a bit of procedural approach. So if again, we go back to certain nodes and change values, the system should adapt to it. So if I now make things longer or smaller, you know, automatically this will adapt to it. Like we can also go back here and change, for example, the, the flag size or height. So you can easily uh, change that here with playing these values. So for example, the extrude node, I can make this longer. So if I hold middle mouse, I can change that. I can make the flag super long if I want to. Maybe make it a bit smaller again. And again, we can also use the UV view. Uh, we can also change the UV, so we can play around with that until something fits better, like that. And yeah, that's basically my base setup. So. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was part one where I cover most of the modeling process, the procedure modeling approaches. And then the next part, I'm gonna talk about adding a simulation on that. So we generated the model, and then I want to add a simulation on that. So we actually have this nice flax more looking natural. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.